السلام عليكم ياكم الله يا جماعة Welcome everybody Today we're, we're in the episode number 11 I believe it's 11, yeah, 11 Feminist lived like a man for 18 months And that was an, a great experience that done by a, a lesbian feminist What a surprising, huh? What a surprise uh, it's done by her, and she wrote a book, actually, about it. It's called uh, A Self-Made Man. A Self-Made Man is a book about her experience living a life of a man among men. Okay? So that was a quite interesting experiment, and today we're going to talk about it. First and foremost, like, we should know who is this feminist. And here, as we can see, the web page, which is in Wikipedia, about Nora Vincent. Nora Vincent. Here is her page. Here is her, uh, how she looked, guys. I hope you see this. She looked like a tomboy girl, if you know what I'm saying. So, Nora Mary Vincent. September 20, 1966, 68, to July 6, 2022. So she died recently. Was an American writer. She was a weekly columnist for the Los Angeles Times and quarterly columnist, <clears throat> columnist on political and culture for the National Gay and Lesbian News Magazine. Because she was, uh, she was, she was lesbian. The advocate, she was a columnist for the Village Voice and Salon.com. Okay, uh, her writing appeared in the New Republic, the New York Times, the New York Post, the Washington Post. So she's quite, fa quite famous and other uh, other criticals she gained particular attention in 2006 for the book self-made man which is we gonna talk about today this is her book self-made man it is an it is about her experience as a man detailing her experience where she lived as a man for 18 months okay I hope that's that's so clear. So she did not fully transmit to a man. She tried to live as a man, appearance as a man. She tried to talk as a man. And uh, she, uh, let's say, tried to hide her feminine features as a breast. She used to wear uh, double, uh, double small sport bra, which is like to, uh, to hide her chest to hide her breast, to look, and she, she used to wear like, uh, to wear uh, clothes like men, and to live with men. And she built uh, a friendship relationship with a bunch of men in Pennsylvania. So that was, that was a great experience. Ibn Falah saying, uh, so she discussed, discussed as a man for 18 months. Yes, she was playing uh, a man role, let's say. And uh, it totally worked. It totally worked. So even the mans that she was, she used to play with, she used to live with, they thought that she is a man, like her man friends. So she was playing the character 100%. Nobody, ha nobody had any doubt about her uh, being female and trying to be an uh, undercover feminists among men no one found out no for 18 months and uh, like uh, in the last of the experience in the in the uh, in the month number 18 she revealed herself she told him she told them and they was they, they were shocked they said that uh, they have some doubts of her being lesbian or something but they uh, of of her being uh, homosexual but they never have a doubt that she will be an actual female okay 
So I found a video also talking about her. Like I will show you some of it, talking about this uh, this exper this experiment. And here is it. Here is the video, guys. See, let me see. You see it? Okay. That's her. That's her in the video. Let's let's catch like a few minutes of it, and we will go to the to the article talking about her experience. Was a man. Yeah, a little bit shorter on the top. Okay. No, and Nora didn't get a sex change operation. She did it the old-fashioned way with acting and a disguise. At five foot ten, one hundred fifty-five pounds, and wearing men's size eleven shoes, Nora was a natural. Growing up in the Midwest with her actress mother, lawyer father, and two older brothers, Nora was a tomboy with a. You see, she she mentioned about herself that uh, she uh, she got raised between only brothers. She had no sisters, and in the Midwest, so she used to be a tomboy, like a, a masculine girl herself. That I believe that helps a little bit of her uh, of her social experiment. That's a great job. Yeah, it is. It is. You will. You need. You need to hear what is the results of that experience and what is her impression on men. How men live their life, and if the man life is easy or not. Yeah. Listen, guys. Flair for the dramatic. She says she's still a tomboy and, in fact, is a lesbian living in Midtown Manhattan with her partner Lisa. I think we can work with this. Her transformation into the guy she calls Ned begins with a buzz cut, baggy men's clothes, and a too small sports bra to flatten her breasts. Do you see how 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 she wear clothes? She wear men trousers, men shoes, and she look unlike a man. That helps. She even wore a little padding in a jock strap. I also try to think, well, what kind of guy is Ned and get for the know, rest? She enlisted the help of makeup so artist Ryan McWilliams. And she used to put makeup to look like a man every day with the, with the help of uh, uh, the makeup artist, this guy. She just came to me and said, Ryan, I'm, I need to turn into a man. The hair smalls, we can make it, right? And so they came up with a method of shredding yeah, braided so wool into whisker sized bits and gluing it onto her face. Women have much stronger nasal resonance as a, as and a rule. And then there's the theatrical component. Ah, oh, so just easy Tarzan out on your chest a little. Ah, oh, good. The Juilliard voice teacher Kate Murray coached Nora for months on a pro. Here is her voice teacher trying to teach her how to uh, how to talk uh, and how to sound like men, to not be figured out. So she played. A lot of things like she she got training for uh, for even even a physical training. She grow the muscles of uh, her shoulders and arms. She uh, she worked out for six months before try uh, before she uh, started this experiment. Program of movement, breathing, and speaking. I want you to be the best man you can be. I All to incorporate mind. some of the subtle and not so subtle characteristics of being a guy. Notice what men do. If they need to suddenly grab a taxi, hey, they just do that. Whereas women will ask for a taxi instead of demand one. When all the pieces are together, hair, makeup, voice, posture, style. Look at the, the huge transformation, guys. Just keep looking. The transformation is complete. You see how she looks? And Nora Vincent becomes Ned Vincent. Like man, as I can. One of these shots will be the second photo on the book cover. The book self. Here is it. You see it? Whoa. In fact, I see it. Whoa. Yeah, it is. Whoa. Like she really looked like a man. And they found like this tiny hairs here, like, like what I have here when a man do not shave. She has some some hair, and she looked like a man with the makeup. Her, uh, her her facial expressions look like a man. She sound like a man. She wear like a man, and she talk like a man. So that's pretty difficult to be to be figured out as uh, as as a real man.
So she did a good job, actually. She did a really good job. Okay, uh, let's leave the video here. You can find it out on, on YouTube. I left you her uh, Wikipedia page in the link in the description and the link of the article that we're going to read today on the description also about her uh, about her experience. So, okay, let's share a screen. It is from ABC News. It's quite respectable, like news channel. So, I hope it is. Okay, let's make it bigger a little bit. Here is it. A self-made man. Okay. Here is it, guys. On ABC News, a self-made man. January... January 20, 2006. Nora Vincent has lived as a man. She didn't undergo a sex change or, uh, or radical hormone treatment. She simply went undercover, an extraordinary <clears throat> feat of acting. Discuse and guts. Vincent lived among men as a man for 18 months to see what Live was like on the other side of the gender divide. Okay. This was uh, this wasn't just a stunt. This was about learning. That was her intention to learn how uh, to learn a lot about how men uh, deal, how men act, how men uh, about the man friendship, about the manhood in general. This is a human project. It was about finding some, something out about the human creature. And I learned in the best possible way because I went through it. That's what she says. Okay. Growing up in Midwest with her actress mother, her mother was an actress and her father was a lawyer. And she had two older brothers. So she lived among male, let's say, male-dominant family. Vincent was a tomboy with a flair for the, uh, for the dramatic. Okay. She says she's still tomboy and a lesbian living in midtown Manhattan with her partner. So she's still a lesbian when they wrote this, uh, this article about her. She was a lesbian and living with a partner, a female partner. At five feet, 10 inch, so she's a little bit tall. She's above average. Five, uh, five feet, 10 inches and 155 pound. Vincent passed as a medium built man. She called Ned. So that was her nickname as a man, Ned. Her transformation began with the buzz cut, baggy man's clothes and two small sport bra to flatten her breasts. So she was hiding her feminine feature, like feminine physical feature. She even she even wore a little padding in the jacks in the jack strap for the rest. She enlisted to help of makeup artist Ryan McWilliams. That was her uh, makeup artist that helped her to look like a man who created Nets 5 o'clock shadows, okay? Then, uh, then there was a, a theoretical component. Vincent underwent, under, underwent months of training with Juilliard's voice teacher, Kate, Kate Marie, to learn, uh, to learn how to sound like a man. That was the voice artist or the voice teacher who taught her how to uh, uh, to choose a tone to uh, to be uh, to talk like a man to sound like a man for everyone to not recognize that she's a female. Okay, women have much stronger nasal uh, res uh, resonance as a rule. Mary explained. That's the that's the voice teacher was explaining to her one of the major differences between men and women in regarding to voice. 
when all the pieces were put together, hair, makeup, voice, posture, and style, the transformation was complete. And Nora Vincent became a Ned Vincent. That is her new name, Ned Vincent. Vincent, a, journal, a journalist, didn't take uh, a project lightly. She estimated she put Ned's, uh, Ned Whisker and Clothes about 150 times during her 18 month experiment. So she was doing really well. I wanted to enter Mel's spheres of interest and see how men are with each, each other. I wanted to make friends with men. I wanted to, to, I wanted to know how male friendship works from inside out. That's what she says. That was her intention. She wanted, she want, like in short, uh, in short terms, she wants to live the manhood experience. She wants to live like a man, to feel like a man, to act in a man's world and the man in the manosphere, let's say. So let's see what's happened. But the man did not boot her off the team. Okay. No, okay. We pass this paragraph. Vincent first act was a newly minted male was to join uh, a quintessential 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 bastion of uh, of camaradari camaradiari camaradiri man bowling team okay it is a man bowling team the name is not necessary in working class pennsylvania Okay, that was that was a man bowling team in Pennsylvania in the uh, in the working class neighborhood, let's say, of Pennsylvania. The only problem, she's terribly bowler. She's a terrible bowler. I mean, she she, she do not have skills in bowling, so she will try her best. But the men didn't boot her off the team. Okay, the man did not boot her off the team. Even she, even even she was uh, like a terrible bowler. It's an amazing thing because I think that shows the generosity that they had. That's what she says. Because she she expected from men to kick her out, like you can't bowl, like get the fuck out. But they uh, they accepted her. Okay. So that was that was a sh that was shocking for her. <clears throat> I mean, it was just the most wonderful rush to get to get these guys handshake, okay? And uh, and I felt comfortable. I meant uh, I meant as comfortable I could feel right away. So she felt comfortable because they accepted her. She played with them. Like she started to make a friendship. That was the first step on the way of friendship with other men. They just took me they just took me in, no question asked. Okay. The team bowled together for nine months and uh, and gradually Vincent gained entrance to their inner sanctum. Okay. Because that remember guys, that was her intention to get closer and closer to other to other men as a man and to be a good friend with men to live a man's life that was her intention okay she found that all the causing all the causing and good natured ribbing and just how men often show affection for uh, for one uh, on another she's talking about the impression that female have about men Men, is, men are tough, men are vulgar, but when she when she was in that role playing a man among men, she found out that that's how men talk to each other. Like that's their way. It is not right or wrong. That's their way of communication. So she started she she stand she started to understand the men's perspective from their experiences. Okay, that's interesting. Near the end of team team's run, 
Vincent decided to reveal herself as a woman, nervous about how the guys would, would react. She tasted she tested the water with Jim. So here, they, they, here she, she is talking about the end of the experience, the end of the experiment. She, uh, she revealed herself as a man, but she was nervous about it. And she, uh, she, she tasted the water with, uh, with one of the men. His, his name is Jim. She took him, uh, she took him in a, she invited him to have a coffee or something and told him, I want to, I want to get, I want to tell you something that will blow your mind. The guy, uh, the guy she had become close, closest with. So they were close friends. She was close with Jim more than the other guys in the team, more than the other men. Vincent took Jim out for a drink with her partner, Lisa and told him she had something to say that uh, that was going to blow his mind so she prepared him to for for this i said the only thing that would blow my mind is if you told me that you were a girl and that's uh, and that she was a guy <clears throat> okay and she goes well you're half right, Jim said. <laughs> so, yeah, she told him. She told Jim, like the her, her male friend. Later, Jim told told the rest of the uh, teammates, who all took it well. Okay, so that that was that was surprising. They did not have, uh, uh, let's say a very harmful reaction or uh, or a harsh reaction <clears throat> jim said he said he think vincent came into the experience the experiment with some uh, misconceptions about men i think she expected to find like a bunch of guys that talking about women's private parts and bunch bunch of phrases and you know so that's uh, that's the man's expectation which is uh, jim jim say, uh, jim jim is saying that when vincent came into that experiment i bet she had in her mind that she will find the man uh, the man uh, let's say the man the man's fear let's say they all talk about women's private part and uh, misogyny and uh, killing uh, and racist and harsh stuff but she didn't expect that but she expected that but she she was she was shocked that was he said i think kind of that what she came into uh, uh, this thinking he says vincent agreed that means she she agreed that she thought she will find some something like that they really showed me up as a bringing, as being one of them, as being one who was uh, really judgmental because they were uh, the ones who took me in and knowing anything and uh, not knowing anything about me. They were the ones who made me their friends, no judgment attached. That's what she says. Cracking the mystery of the uh, of a boy's night out. So she was dreaming about that. Boy's night out. What boys do in boy's night out. Is one thing, but understanding the explicit world of man's sexuality is a quite another. So that was an interesting experience. To gain understanding of what some might consider the quint quintessential quintis quintessential male experience vincent were so several strip clubs so she went with men to to some strip clubs that is interesting that is interesting remember here we were talking about lesbian feminist playing the role of men among men okay 
So she went to strip clubs with uh, with her male friends. With her male friends, okay. She describes the experience as hellish, demanding, demeaning for the strippers and even worse for the men, okay. I saw the men there. I saw the looks on their faces. This is not about a procreation of women, of course. It is about appreciation of their own sexuality. It is about the urge, and that's not always that pleasurable, really. So she found out that this, uh, she found out a little bit about the man's sexual drive. She felt it like with the men's around her, how do, how do they look to the stripper? And how is the uh, high sexual drive, this urge that drives them? Okay, so she never expected that. She do not know, she never lived as a man for a minute. So that was mind blowing for her, okay? Vincent says, strip joints are about pure sex drive, completely empty of any meaningful interaction. Uh -huh. She tried to understand how men feel about their sexual drive. Even when a woman is, uh, is, is grating on your lap, okay, I, I, I think uh, dancing on, her, on, uh, on, on his lap. Even though Vincent is attracted to women, she said, because she's a lesbian, she's attracted to women. She says, she said, was never aroused during her visits to the club. She says, even, even she is, uh, uh, even she is at, attracted to women as her, as a lesbian, she said she never been aroused by the, uh, female dancers in the in the strip club she never been aroused by them because this strip club is designed for men so the strip dancers the strippers will try to arouse men by stimulating the men's sexual drive so you you never get aroused by them of course that's like that's what's supposed to happen. It is not a surprise for me. I, I really ran smack, uh, smack up against the differences between male, between, between male and female. Here's the, the waking point, guys. Listen to this. Listen to this. Sorry. Here's it. I really ran smack up against the difference between male and female sexuality. It is the female sexuality is mental. For men, it is an urge. And that is one of the main differences between men and women. Women have to be sexually stimulated mentally for her to be aroused, okay? For the men, it's a pure drive, will be stimulated uh, visually. Visual sexual stimulation work in men more than double or triple, double to triple at least, of uh, the female brain. So for men, it is pure physical. It's almost pure physical, the sexual drive. For women, it's mental. It is mental. Or a big part of it is mental, to be more accurate. So she tried, she, she started to understand that. And that's a huge difference. She was shocked. Everything that girls do never turn her on, but it turns all the men on, her friends. So that was quite interesting. It is core, it is bodily function. It is necessity. It is such a powerful drive, and I think because we, women, we as a woman, she mean, don't have testosterone in our systems, we do not understand how hard it is. 
that's a great paragraph. That's a great sentence. Let's let's read it again, guys. It is core, it is bodily function, it is necessary, it is such a powerful drive, and I think because we women do not have do not have testosterone in our system, we do not understand how hard it is. Okay. Give me one second, guys. Okay. Let's get back to it. So she was she she, she was mind blow. She, her mind was blown because of this difference that 99% of female on this planet do not understand. And I do not expect them to understand that. The male sexual drive is very high. You cannot ever, never, ever compare it to, men, to women's sexual drive. We have double the center in the brain that process the, sex, uh, the sexual thoughts and control the sexual drive is a, is a double size in male brain. So we have a huge sexual drive and it's a pure, almost pure physical. Women can never ever understand that. That's why women who, got, who get half naked tell you, no, that's not sexy. You can control yourself. They never, they will never understand a man's sexual drive. They will never feel it. They will never understand it because they never lived it. They live in 10 to 20 percent of your sexual drive and they are okay with controlling it themselves and they think we have the same and we can control it in the same way no we don't we don't you have 20 more 20 multiple of the testosterone in your body as a female and we have double size of the sexual processing center in our our male brain and the sexual visual stimulation affects us double to triple than you, more than you. So you will never understand it. That's why if a man, if your man told you to change the clothes, that's, that's revealing, like that's sexy. Do not fucking argue with him. He know what he's talking about. And he know how other men feels when they see your flesh like that so they know what they're talking about dr hassan most welcome the female body builders <laughs> have, have the some have the same problem after steroid cycles yeah some of them yes if they took steroids like a lot for a, for a long period of time even her like clitoris will grow will grow yeah yeah i know that i know steroids effects on female body but they have higher probability of cancer higher probability of other diseases uh, which men suffer from it a lot more than women uh, breast cancer they have higher probability of breast cancer so yeah let's get back to the article guys vincent even doubled doubled in the art of picking up uh, a woman so she joined the pickup uh, pickup artist community okay she joined the pickup artist community when she was playing man and agreed to wear a hiding camera for 2020 during her exploits okay so she joined <laughs> she joined pickup artist camp as a female she's a female but as a man she joined the pickup artist community trying to pick up women as a man okay the sexual drive increase yeah 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 totally i totally totally uh, totally agree dr hassan yes uh, so let's uh, let's check it out like how did uh, how did she do as a pickup artist she was quickly reminded that 
in this arena, it's women who have the power, she says. Yeah, women do not understand this. Do not understand male experience among women. In fact, we sit there, we sit there and, we, uh, and we just with one word, no, will crush someone. She says, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to do the part where you cross the uh, cross the room and you got up to the stranger that you have never met in the middle of the room full of people and say the first word and she said simply the female will say no and she will crush all of that and those and those uh, and those first words are so hard so uh, so hard to say without sounding like a cheese ball or sounding like a jerk <laughs> welcome to being a man vincent encountered some pretty uh, some pretty cold shoulders in her attempts at the bar but she didn't manage to go on about uh, 30 dates with women as net so her uh, her goal was to pick up a 30 woman in this like camp but she uh, but she never uh, she never get her goal like it is so hard to pick up a, a woman as a man and girls do not know anything about that so when she lived that she admit that this is very hard this is very hard to pick up a woman mostly uh, mostly arranging them with the with the internet Okay. Oh no, she did manage to go on about 30 dates with a woman. Oh, she did it. But using social media, using social media, mostly arranging them on, on the internet. Okay. Okay. Not the social media, the internet. That was in 2006. There is no social, real social media like today, day and age. So she was using dating sites all the classic dating site vincent says that dates were rarely fun and that the, uh, that the pressure of ned having to prove himself was uh, was grueling she was surprised that uh, many women had no interest in in a soft vulnerable man <laughs> okay so that was not shocking what do you think, Dr. Hassam? She found out by herself because she's soft. She's soft. She's acting to be like a man, but she's still soft. She says, most of women are not interested in soft men. <laughs> and that was shock. That was real shock that she found out by herself. Ta-da! We're saying that since the beginning of time. I lost my voice. Keep repeating that. Men, women are not interested in soft men. They're interested in manly men, masculine fucking men, strong men. She found out that by herself. Ta-da! Surprise! My prejudice was that the ideal man is a woman in man's body. Listen to that carefully, guys. Feminist is speaking. My prejudice was that the ideal man is a woman in man's body. And I learned, no, that's really not. Soft man is a weak man, and weak man is a bad man, is not a good man. And women do not like soft and weak men. They are not attracted. They are not designed to be hardly wired to be attracted to weak or soft men. There are a lot of women out there, out there who really want uh, a manly man, and they want his stoicism. She says, "Okay." She found the whole the, the cold hard truth by herself, guys. Vincent didn't limit her explore uh, explore exploration of masculinity to just friendship and sexuality. She said she found differences in every walk of life, including shopping for a new car at a dealership. 
because salesmen will treat a female client in a totally different way that he will treat a male client. Okay? Imagine you as a man entering a dealership, a car showroom, and start to talk to the, to the sales guy. And he starts to, oh, your eyebrows look good. You look amazing. I will, <laughs> I will give him a right talk in, in, in his face. To, he will lay down for the next six days in the ground. He will never talk to me like that. And if he did, he will be in trouble. But he will talk to a, a female client like that. So she catches the differences between going to buy a car as a female and going to buy a car as a male. The whole dynamic of conversation will shift. Listen to this, guys. That's so fun. Going as a Nora, as a female, the salesman pitches quickly turns into flirtatious. Flirtatious. The salesman was flirting with her. I told you. But when when she turned, when she returned to the same salesman as Ned. The tone was all business and talk was all about the car's performance. Yeah, that's what man interested in. I'm interested in car performance, about how new to meter the engine have, how horsepower, zero to 100 kilometer an hour, the acceleration, the stability, the gearbox. I need to, I need to hear about the performance. Women <laughs> need, need to hear about flirtation, about the color of the car, about the, uh, how smooth the, uh, the furniture of the car. We're interested in two different things, and salesmen acknowledge that, and they know that. And that's why the, uh, the conversation dynamic will be different if the client was a male or female. So she noticed that. I know that because I worked in sales and sales development since a long time. So I do acknowledge that. Okay. And in Vincent's final months as Annette, she managed to uh, inf infiltrate all male environment. A lapsed Catholic, Vincent thought, it would be interesting to present uh, to penetrate the cloistered inner world of monastery. Okay, so she went to church. Ned managed to live there for three weeks as a trainee. The monks, Vincent says, were uh, pious, smart men, but they were still men. So she liked the, the priests in the, uh, in the church. She said they, they, they have a good morality and they, are, uh, and they are smart men, but they are still men. She says she witnessed desperate needs for male intimacy and lack of ability to give it. Desperate need for male intimacy and lack of ability to give it. At the retreat, it was really painful. Okay. Not only not only were the uh, the, the monks uh, struggling to be open and intimate, Benson says they was hostile to her feminine side. Yeah, they have to. They have to, because as a man of God's and a servant of the church. Uh, they have to uh, detach the feminine side from masculine figure and detach masculine side from feminine figure. So the nuns will be so feminine and the, uh, and the priests or the monks will be so masculine. So as a trainee, she said, they, 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 uh, they considered or they felt, they detected the feminine side on her personality 
because she is biologically female and there was they were hostile towards this femininity you have to keep it out they they do not know that she's actual female but they detect some feminine uh, attribution let's say in her personality okay so they were hostile about it she said was ostracized because because of the of the monks assumptions about her sexual orientation so they have some assumptions about her sexual orientation many of them thought i was gay so many of them <laughs> They assume that she is that she is a gay, as one of them told me in on confession, and I said, "Well, yeah, but not in the way you think." Vincent replied to him. Vincent thought the perfect, the perfect end to her eighteen month saga would be uh, would be to join men only therapy group, and the place where guys try to bond and. Uh, and show their emotion instead of hiding them. I don't believe in this bullshit, guys, to be honest. I believe that uh, close friends as a man, like you can talk to each other about problems, but uh, this healing group, group therapy, that's absolute garbage. I do not advise any, any of you, like men who, who listen to me, to go to to talk about your problems and show your emotions to complete strangers no do not do that do it with your friends with your close friends okay again vincent so men men struggle uh, with the vulnerability they don't get to show the weakness they do not get to show the uh, the affection especially with each other and so often, all their emotions are shown are, sh are shown in rage. She says, "Okay." Instead, Vincent said the ma uh, the ma the men talked about rage. Often, their rage towards women and what they would do physically and violently toward women. A lot was blowing off steam so that was not real there was just uh, blowing off off the steam just talking to talk that's why it's bullshit they would talk about fantasizing about shopping up their wives or something it is not uh, that they were they would over uh, they would ever do that but it was a way to get the ba the blackest thoughts to get out the blackest thoughts so they were just like uh, releasing the pressure of their self okay nora began em empathize with uh, with the fear and stress men feel of having always the strong provider how to, to be the strong provider yeah it's a lot of stress as a man a lot of responsibility that you have to take once again, some group members thought Ned was a gay, but nobody suspected Ned was a woman. <laughs> after, uh, after eight sessions, the group went into the back, into the back country weekend retreat about Vincent 18 month, but Vincent 18 month of being an uh, imposter was closing in, in on her. The pressure of being someone that uh, that you're not, and the fear of discovering, and uh, and decide, and the decide that involves piles up and piles up. So by the time I get I got around to do uh, to doing this man's group, they were really re reacting, reaching critical mass. She says, I was out in the woods with a bunch of guys who had uh, rage issues about women and I was in a drag, okay? And I thought, oh, God, you know what I'm doing, okay? So she, she was in fear a little bit, going in, into the woods 
in, into the forest with a lot of men, armed men, and they have uh, they have uh, anger issue. She continued her emotional descent, and uh, and a week later checked into the hospital with several de uh, with severe depression. Okay, this is very important, guys. This is very important. You have to concentrate on this. With what? With severe depression. She had a severe depression. Why? Because she tried to live like a man for 18 months. Tara, welcome to man's life. Imagine that you're living this, this life for like 20 to 30 years. Tara, severe depression, right? She went to the hospital. She can't handle it. Her mentality cannot handle it. Okay. Identity, identity. She, uh, she conclude was not something to play around with. Mm. Here's a great, here's a great message to the transgenders. Identity. She conclude was not something to play around with. You cannot live as a woman if you are born as a man. And you cannot live as a man if you are born as a woman. That's so dangerous. That's so dangerous. And the experience here explaining to you why it is so dangerous. She, she went with a severe depression to the hospital. Okay. When you mess around with that, you really mess around with something that you need that helps you to function. And I found out that gender lives in your brain and is something much more than, uh, than custom. And I really learned that the hard way. That's a great quote. That's a real great quote. Vincent says she is, she is healed now and glad to be rid of Ned. Glad, glad to be rid of Ned, the man life, the masculine life. But he reviewed her view, her views about men have changed forever. Do you, do you catch that, guys? Her views about men is changed forever. Her views about men have changed forever. Men are suffering. Listen, listen closely what she says. Men are suffering. They have different problems that women have, but they do not have it better. She says, they need our sympathy. They need our love. And maybe they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. They need to be what? Together. Women do not understand this, that why we prefer men's uh, company. I prefer to be with men more than women. Maybe in night, I'll be with a woman. But in the daytime, I prefer to be with men. Most of my time, I prefer to be with men. I like men company. I enjoy men company. I need men company. Women do not understand that, especially like naive girls with, uh, let's say, with a lot of jealousy issue. Yeah. Especially newly married women, they complain and scream and whine about uh, whine about this a lot. He he go with his friends a lot. Yeah, let him go with his friends a lot. That's how men are wired. We need to be with each other. We need we prefer man's company, not female's company. Yeah, she realizes that by herself. Again, men are suffering. They have different problems that women have, uh, but they don't have it better. They need our sympathy. They need our love. And maybe they need, they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. Ironically, listen, this is the closing statement, guys. Ironically, Vincent says it looks experiencing life as a man for her to appreciate being a woman. So she, what, what was the conclusion of that? She appreciate being a woman. I really like being a woman. 
I like it more because I think it is more of a privilege. It's more of what? It's more of a privilege. So when she tried to live like a man for 18 months, ended up saying that being a woman is a privilege. And I appreciate being a woman in this world because she ended up with severe depression when she tried to live like a man. That's real. And that's so deep. So if anybody have anything, just write it in the chat, send it as a super chat. What do you think about this experience, experience, guys? If you need to read the article, I left you the link in the description from ABC News, and I left you her, uh, her Wikipedia page in, uh, in the description also, if you want to check the article by yourself. That was a great experiment, experiment that done by a feminist, lesbian feminist actually, living like a man for 18 months, and she regretted and she thanks God that she is a woman. She appreciates being a woman because being a man is suffering. She said that by, by her tongue. So that's it. That's it, guys. Appreciate you joining here. Support the channel, guys. The, uh, the PayPal uh, donation link is in the description. You can support the channel by it and uh, you can join the membership of the channel to get uh, the privilege of uh, commenting on, on the live streams, like the channel member here. And there is three class of the channel membership, which is the basic, premium, and the diamond membership. The diamond membership will get free consultation uh, every month, once every month. They can, if you are, a diamond member you can send me an email at info at redpillarabic.com and we will arrange for the uh, free counseling every month you're most welcome uh, if anybody is looking for <clears throat> for a counseling session coaching session you can book me up from uh, redpillarabic.com the, uh, the services uh, page or you can drop me a Drop me a message, an email at info at redpillarabic.com for counseling session or personality trait analysis session to understand yourself in more deep way. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. You are most welcome. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum.